in your opinion, how much of the wall that needs to be built in place is either there built in place today or funded? How much of it? They got enough funding right now to build just under 500 miles. Uh, there's, a, there's a little over 100 miles of new wall built, but people are going to say, well, you know, there's more than 100 miles. We're saying the other miles are re replacement wall that's not new wall. Can you believe that? First of all, the president's building the wall exactly where Border Patrol tells him to build it. So if it's more important to replace the dilapidated fence than build a new wall over here, they're going to replace the dilapidated fence because that's where the traffic is coming through. So Border Patrol is getting exactly what they want, where they want. So again, the target point is not new wall going up, it's replacement wall, okay. If your door is broke, you're gonna fix the door before you put a fence around your house? I mean, come on, <laughs> it, it's a common sense. But that's, but this president will get it done. Look, he'll take money from deal, he'll get it done. Any legal way possible to protect this nation. I can tell you, he'll get it done. You, look, look what he's done so far. In 1990, in Secure Fence Act, $50 billion to give him. What did they give him last year? 1.6. It's a travesty, but he'll get it done. I, I got total faith in this president, 100%. Anything else? Yeah. Sir? Who's funding the caravans from Central America? Ah. 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 <laughs> All over the money. Come on. Honestly, I... I I can tell you it's being investigated, and there's um, s there's several investigations ongoing. Uh, I and I, I just can't look. It's, it's law enforcement sensitive. I can tell you though, they're onto it. So people will be held responsible. There's no way 200,000 people just all decide one day. Okay, let's go to the United States. Yes, ma'am. We've interacted with President Trump over these years, and we pray for him. He's so strong. Can you tell us how you feel he is personally on your siege again with coup number three right now? Look, I, the, the president, you want to fight this president? Fight him. He loves to fight. Yeah. And look, he knows what's going on. I know. He, he knows, and, and, and you're not pulling anything over his, or, you're not pulling all over his eyes. I mean, I tell you, I... 20 years from now, 30 years from now, when we're talking about he was the greatest president we ever had. Wait and see. Because he's, he really is. He's putting America first. Look what he's done with trade and employment. And now they're saying you know, the pandemic's his fault. I mean, give me a break. Give the guy, let the guy be president for a day. Every day he wakes up, he's being attacked, his family's being attacked. If they were to attack the President Obama's family the way they attack his family, this country would be in uproar. I mean, you know, no, he's, I can understand why he tweets. Sometimes when he tweets, I say, ah, you know. But when you wake up every day and you're constantly in defense mode and you're getting attacked every day and, and the stories, 98% of them are false mm -hmm. and your family's being attacked and ridiculed, at some point he's saying, I can't talk to the news media because they misreport it. The only way I can get what I really want to get to the American people is tweet it. I get it. I mean, that, that's his, I think that's his defense mechanism. And look, I, don't, I, have, I have not agreed with everything that President Trump has said and done. I'm just being honest, I, I don't agree with everything my wife says and does. But I can tell you that as a president of the United States, if you care about the safety and security of this nation, if you care about this country being the United States that you and I grew up in, mm -hmm. if you care about your military, if you care about the first responders, and you care about the, the sovereignty of this country, there's not a better man for the job. He's the right guy at the right time. Yeah, he's, he's very strong. He's very strong. And I tell you, he works. He works. I can't believe, I don't know when the man sleeps. He's, he, he, he calls me all the time and I'm saying, you know, you got time to do that too. Yes, ma'am, back there. Okay, uh, the Remain in Mexico uh, plan that they had in place, and I've heard that it's going to be canceled because they're afraid of the COVID, you know, blah, blah, blah. Are they releasing those people into the United States now? No. The people who were supposed to remain in Mexico policy. No. They are not, they're not allowing them into the United no. States. No, no. I just talked to Mark Morgan the other day. Matter of fact, uh, Title 42, the, the, the reason the President suspended immigration under t t Title 42 of Communicable Diseases Act, he hasn't lifted that yet. So, you know, no, everybody's being arrested at the border, being turned right around. They're not even taking asylum case. Okay, well, you want to claim asylum? Well, when the government turns back on, come on back, but right now, that way. So, uh, the only people that are, there are some children. 
There are some children being brought in. Uh, very few, though. It depends. You know, and of course, if someone comes across and they got a wide open gash across your chest because someone attacked them, there's there's some humanitarian case, but 99.5% of them are being turned around saying, go back, we'll deal with you later. Hey, look, that's, that's another brave move. No one's ever done it before. This president did it. And I, and I tell you, what, I tell you what, what scares me to death right now is that Mexico, the Remain in Mexico program is working because Mexico's agreeing to do it, which is another sad thing. Think about it. The government of Mexico is doing more secure our border than Democratic leadership in Congress. Think about that. Now, if they get tired of doing it, we're in trouble because Congress still doesn't fix the three loopholes that cause this crisis. You got the, the, the remittance payments for illegal aliens here. They send money back home to their families. Billions of dollars in Mexico, I think it was $61 billion last year. That money's not going south right now because the unemployment crisis right now in this country. So they got COVID hitting them really hard. They got less money coming to the country. If, if it's a good thing that Border Patrol's not dealing with these families and stuff because they're very vigilant on the border because there will be another attempt to come across either to get medical care because if you got a choice, you're going to be in Mexican hospital or American hospital, what are you going to pick? And if they're going to come here to try to get a better life. Look, I, I'm going to say this. Tom Holm is not anti-immigrant. Anybody says that, doesn't know me? I'm not anti-immigrant. I'm anti-illegal immigration. That's the difference. I can't, see, I can't blame anybody that wants to come to the greatest country on earth, which we are, but you can't, you, can't, you can't do it while disrespecting our laws. You can't just come across and say, I'm here and cheating the system. Can't do it. We're the most giving country in the world. Do you know we, reckon, we, we, we bring in more refugees than any nation in the country? We're a, very, we're a very giving country. And for people to say that now we're not because President Trump, no. President Trump actually wrote an immigration plan that still allows for family, relatives, mother, fathers, children, you know, of, of immigrants. But he actually wants to add merit to it. So you come to the country, you gotta have a skill, you gotta have, you know, if you wanna come to this country, you gotta have some sort of skill to help this country thrive. Like Australia does, Canada does, New Zealand does, England does. Well, the United States does it all of a sudden. Oh, God, we're, in, we're a racist country now. It's incredible. Anything else? Hillary. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm all for the wall. The wall is great and everything, but what are y'all doing to, about tunnels? <laughs> there's, a, there's actually the, the, there's a tunnel task force with, with CBP and ICE. The technology is amazing. Uh, they're finding tunnels, a lot of tunnels. Now the new wall has anti dictate No. The new the new wall has things that will tell them <laughs> if if someone's if someone's if someone's drilling that wall, digging under that wall, they're gonna know about it. And and that, and that's one thing about the wall, the Democrats go the wall, they you know, they saw through that wall. Yeah, but they gotta go get a, a they gotta go get a saw. The only thing get a forty foot ladder. Well they gotta go get a forty foot ladder. It, the wall isn't meant to stop people, the wall is meant to slow people down so the boards can respond. So the new wall is a smart wall. They have things as part of that wall will let board control know someone's messing with the wall. But for women and children, they'll make them go around the wall. When they go around the wall, it funnels them into one location where a lot less agents can do a, a lot more work because they're funneled. So the wall look every place they build a wall. Illegal immigration decreased, illegal drug flow decreased. In San Diego sector, when I was a Border Patrol agent, we arrested, used to arrest 2,000 aliens a night, a night, down in San Diego sector. They wait, they wait in the soccer field, they line up in the soccer field, the sun goes down and the race is on. You gotta get called as many as you could catch. That's the way it was. You go down there now, big beautiful wall. There is no one coming across, there's 2,000 people not coming across that border now. As a matter of fact, the chief down there, Rodney Scott, told me that from the time I was there, is nine is under 98 percent operational control what used to be 2000 a night is 26 27 a night so it works That's it. i was glad that you mentioned the terrorist issue uh, when i was in jordan in 2002 i'd been a missionary over there but i had people coming up to me and said if we want to get into the united states we are going to come into the southern border and that was part of the plan. There were people that were designed, that were planning to attack us, and that was their plan. So for you to mention that, I was glad to hear you say that. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the decisions in Zero Tolerance. It's, it's, there's a lot of intelligence out there. And look, anybody says a terrorist didn't come across the border, they say, well, they've only arrested, you know, three or four, you know, well, for, how, many are, how many are okay? You know, and, and when I was ice director, we, we, we detained known suspected terrorists. The only time they haven't been arrested on that board. But my concern is not, not how many we arrested, how many we didn't arrest. Because the board show, you know, there's a lot of getaways down there. That's one of the things the wall is going to fix. The, look, the, 
But that's why the Democrats don't, a lot of the Democrats don't want it. They call it Trump's vanity wall. It ain't Trump's vanity wall, it's America's wall. It's gonna protect this country. We all should support the wall. And he didn't come up with this. You think the president thought of this himself? No. What's this president different from everybody else? He actually asked the people on the front line. Yes. I mean, I, how many times? I know how many times he's called me and asked me for my opinion on things. And the border patrol. I've been with him. We go to the southern border and go down and see the wall. You know, he'll walk right by the chief patrol agent and walk right up to the border patrol agent up there, the, the regular line guy, and say, "How's it going for you? What don't you like? What's going on? What can I do better for you?" He'll blow right by the senior executive and go talk to the front line guy. That's, that's who he is. So, it's, again, he listens to the experts. He's a smart man, but he didn't come up all this by himself. He's smart enough to bring the experts in and say, what do you need? What do you think will work? And right away they said, give us a wall. The wall works in San Diego, it'll work in Rio Grande Valley, it'll work in Yuma, Arizona. It makes sense. And if you look at Yuma, Arizona, just completed a section of wall, not only is the crime in that neighborhood down over 65%, the illegal immigration is down over 80%. And just one section wall, so it works. The wall works. And remember, I said the wall is too expensive. If we secure the border, look at the billions of dollars we can save in immigration courts, Im immigration detention. You know, it, it will pay for itself in five years. Just the, the amount of illegal immigration will shut down. Way in the back, sir. What kind of numbers do we know of? Do you know of of the illegal immigrants coming from other countries? I can tell you the northern the illegal immigration cause he's asking me where the I was just I'm going to do it I got to repeat your question so other than Central America and Mexico where's most of the illegal immigration coming I can tell you Canada accounts for like 7% 7% of illegal immigration that's that's what they know of now it's wide open they don't know what they don't know but I can tell you the reason they put more, more people on Rio Grande Valley they're going to put the water where the fire is that's where the fire is right now maritime maritime smuggling is starting to uptick now since the, since the, since the wall is going up and there's uh, the president has taken remain in Mexico program maritime smuggling is starting to make a resurgence the Coast Guard's all over that and in, uh, in Florida so and there's a lot of maritime around San Diego coming in but again the Coast Guard the president's smart he knows, of course he talks to people, when I shut down the, 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 the land border, what's going to happen? Well, they're going to go maritime. No, they're not. I'm going to send Coast Guard here and Coast Guard there. The guy's smart. It's just like he did with the, the drug smuggling, the drug cartels are now taking advantage of this pandemic. He put the military on that. <laughs> the president's great. I mean, drugs? No, that's not going to happen. I'm going to send the military. Maritime? No, I'm going to have Coast Guard there. He's, he's always one step ahead, so that's what's happening. Still, in, over 90% of illegal immigration happens on the southern land border. It's just, it's just like, now when that wall gets up and, he, and they get the resources they need down there and the technology they need down there, that may change. He's already, like, illegal immigration is already down 80, the exact number is like 84.4% from the high in May because of this president and what he's done for this country. What is your solution as an immigration expert, sir? I'd like to know what you think that we need to do with that. I know enforcement has been your focus, but I would like to hear from you, especially with your audience, with the president and others. Well, you're right. You can't, we can't arrest 20 million people. Can't happen. But we can take away the enticements. If they can't get a job, they're not coming. If they can't get a job, they're not staying. Which again, I wrote in my book, E-Verify, and sir, you're exactly on the money, is not only Democrats fighting E-Verify, some of the Republicans in Congress doesn't want E-Verify to happen. Look, if they can't get a job, they're not gonna come. That's, that's one of the major enticements. You still got all the other enticements, right? Free healthcare and all this other stuff, but if they would stop the employment, if they don't make E-Verify, first of all, E-Verify is, is the best system we got going. It's, it's prevented hundreds of thousands of being employed, but it can be beat. But there's a way to, to fix it. If you get on the internet and you, you do some sort of, you ever been asked multiple choice questions, what car have you owned in the past? What, what address has been your address? They can do the same thing to people self-verify who they are, so we verify can't be beat. But, and that's being worked on, but stop giving enticement, stop rewarding little behavior. Now I've been told many times, people say, well, shouldn't the DACA kids get something? I say, well, first of all, most of them are not kids. Second of all, if you want to go ahead and fix DACA, I'm a law enforcer. I'll support what you do, because my job is to enforce whatever law you enforce. But let me tell you something. If you cre keep rewarding illegal behavior, why will it stop? Yeah, yeah. This country is showing over and over again, if you hide out long enough, you're going to get something. You're going to get amnesty, you're going to get some sort of DACA. Look, 
I, I don't, these kids are brought from the country of their own. I sit and you say, you wanna do a doc fix? So what are you gonna do for the 300,000 family units that come across this board the last three years? That's your next docking population because those kids are brought to their country they'll follow their own. I said, you gotta end it. Stop rewarding little behavior. I think we all learn as kids. You don't, if you don't have deterrence and consequence to bad behavior, it's not gonna stop. So I'm, I'm against it. I'm, 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 I'm against giving anything. I'm against, I'm for enforcing law. If you don't like the law, Congress change it. But they won't change it. It's easier for Congress to say ICE ignore the law than for them, for them to change the law. And ICE shouldn't ignore the law. It's just, you know, ICE officers have done nothing wrong than the forced laws that are on the books, enacted by Congress and signed by the President. I didn't think Congress was in the business of passing laws they didn't want to enforce. If they are, there's better things they could be doing with their time. So that's my answer. <laughs> yes, sir, in the pink shirt. Regarding uh, anchor babies, what is your interpretation of the Constitution where it says that a U.S. citizen is born to citizens? I don't, I don't think the founding fathers wanted to reward people who were in this country illegally with one of the most cherished things in the world is the United States citizenship. I just, I, and I think if it gets to the Supreme Court, they'll agree with me. Look, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not, again, I'm just speaking from a guy who's been law enforcement for so many years and a guy who loves his country. Do you really think the founding fathers sat there and said, okay, here's what we're going to do. People come to this country illegally in violation of federal law. We're going to reward them with the most precious gift we can give them, United States citizenship. It's another reason, another enticement. Look, when, when, you know, we, when the families first came across the FY14 and 15, we actually did a nationwide surge. Did you hear any bitching about it? No, <laughs> President Trump did it and all of a sudden it's a tragedy. We did it in FY15 and I still went out and found like 124 families. Do you know that 60% of those families, the, the, the mom was already pregnant or had a U.S. citizen child? It's just, look, illegal aliens cannot collect social benefits, they say. U.S. citizen children can. And when President Trump rolled back, if you take social services, you can't immigrate, all of a sudden the left went crazy. Say, wait a minute, why do you care? Because you said they never took them anyway, so you shouldn't matter to you. <laughs> so you can't have it both ways. So, oh, Anything else? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, in your opinion, how is the uh, war on drugs uh, and the southern border uh, ex expedited that situation? And do uh, you believe the relaxation of the federal uh, drug laws would help to alleviate some of the power? No. <laughs> no. Drugs are bad. Drugs have killed a lot of people in this country. It's a disease, it should be treated like a disease, but no, you can, you can never, look, I don't, I don't agree with legalizing marijuana. Call me a redneck, I, whatever. I don't believe marijuana should be legalized. I tell you what, I, push, I, I bet you especially Agent Avila don't like the legalization of drugs. Man's partner got lost, he got his life lost by drug cartels. Look, drug, drug, drugs are, are, are poison in this country. And again, we got the right president at the right time. The wall is not only going to stop illegal immigration, it's going to stop a lot of drug flow. It will. And uh, no, I'm totally against drugs. I'm totally against legalizing it. I think the war, I, if I want to have a war on drugs, I, I'd rather have President Trump than any other guy I know. Because when, 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 he, when he got intelligence that the, the cartels were starting to move maritime, he didn't hesitate. He put the military and the Coast Guard on it. He didn't, he, he didn't hesitate a bit. Sir. So third time's the charm. I think Trump's asked you twice to be director of the FBI. You accept it the third time? Pardon me? Me? Third, third time director of the FBI? Me? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. What do you think? I'll say the same thing I said in the news show the other night. I'll never say never. I came back once. I I I I never say never. But you're third retirement, right? Pardon me? Third retirement. Hey, I can only get one retirement check. That's a problem though. So, <laughs> but I've. I've had many discussions with the president. Like I say, I'd never say never. Uh, if, if the man needs your help, he needs your help. He's a president. And look, I, if, if you haven't known anything about me in the last 45 minutes I've been talking, I love my country and I, and I, and I love the men and women of law enforcement. And, and I'm sick and tired of law enforcement. Look what's happening in New York City, throwing water on them. I mean, it's, what is happening? And uh, we gotta take, we got to take it back, people. we got to keep this guy. I tell you what, if Joe Biden becomes kind of president, it's going to be unrecognizable. So we got to make sure we get out there and vote for the greatest president I've ever worked for. And I'm saying it, I say it all the time, greatest president I've worked for. I've worked for six of them. No one's done more. It's a fact. You, no one can argue with me. Open an argument, let's have one. No one's done more in four years than this president has done to protect this country and do everything he can. I mean, a terrorist starts running around the country, you've got a hellfire missile. Boom. No more terrorists. <laughs> 
I loved it. <laughs> the guy responsible for how many U.S. citizen deaths? No mas. And, and why do you think North Korea's been so quiet? He's thinking, wow, wow, you came with a missile all the way from over there. <laughs> the president means business. He wants to protect, the protection of this country is number one. People start talking about China, taking on China, China trade deal. That's what he's supposed to, he's the president of the United States. He's supposed to look out for our interests first. The man is actually makes sense. Sir, back there, I, I keep, I, yes, sir. Now, our immigration system, it seems to have a lot of problems. I was wondering what you thought about maybe adopting an immigration policy that works, maybe one like Israel has. You know, but I talk about Israel, Israel has the best wall system in the world, and their crossings are in the single digits on a daily basis. I don't know what the immigration system is in Israel. Here's what I think the immigration system would be. Congress needs to fix the immigration system, so either you come in legally or you don't come at all. If you come here on a visa, you go home. If you don't go home, it's a crime. Entry the country legally is a crime, overstaying a visa isn't. I think if you overstay a visa, you meant to stay when you came here, you had no intention of leaving, it ought to be a crime to not leave the country once you, once you overstay a visa. Make that a crime. And put a bond on the, on the visa. When you get a visa to come here for college, you gotta pay a bond. You don't leave on time, you, you pull that bond, you go look for him. What do these bonds do? The bonds buy more immigration officers. What do they do? They'll go arrest people to overstay the visas. Yeah. We're done? Anybody else? Uh, I'm just wondering, in terms of that law, is there anything similar for people, basically from the Middle East? And I can tell you how many women I know who would come over, have a baby, go back, they come over, have another baby in a different state. So is there something to keep track of that? Because I think that they know in the region it's going to collapse at some point, and they're all going to want to claim their citizenship when they come back here. Is there any way to track that? Yes, birth tourism is a, is a priority of ICE right now. It's mostly coming from China, Russia, Turkey. That's the three big ones, China, Russia, Turkey. But there's a numerous criminal investigation, if it was when I was there, we're taking it seriously. Again, if we fix the law saying, if you're here, you, you know, when you come here for tourism, if you're pregnant, you're supposed to come here with enough money to be able to pay for that pregnancy, that's, that's stuff that the State Department checks. But I don't care. If you, if you, you know, birth tourism is a big problem, especially when you take, talk about China and Russia. You know how many U.S. citizens Citizens live in China and Russia now. They're going to be pledging their allegiance to their governments. They're going to interest government. It's a huge issue. Again, it's something the Congress needs to fix. It's, it's a loophole that is, is exploited. And instead of Congress doing what they're doing, trying to destroy this president for simply protecting America, they ought to be trying to fix their laws and doing their job for once. But no, birth tourism is a huge issue. I, when I was the ICE director, it was a priority for us. We shut down a lot of it in California. But specifically because who the three people are concerns me. I mean, my company had to stop it so that any employee that's coming over to the U.S. had to prove their citizenship as an American citizen or through their family so that they could come and have the baby here. So the company knew it was a problem. So I would that our government knows as well. They, they know it's a problem. Uh, HSI is addressing it through enforcement. But it's really Congress needs to, you know, tighten up the rules around it. Anything else? Thank I want to thank you for having me. Thank you very much. <laughs>